Hello everyone. Let's provide the solution to this problem. X to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 equals 12. And we are to solve this completely. We are to solve this completely, right? So what do we do? I will have x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 equals 12, right? So let's bring 12 to the left. And uh, okay, it's 12 here. Yeah? We're going to bring 12 to the left. So we have x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 minus 12 equals 0. So this is what we have. Okay, so from here, what do we do? We will try to factorize what we have on the left hand side. So I write x to the power of 4. In place of this, I'm going to write minus 4x squared, then plus 3x squared minus 12 this is equal to 0 now remember that minus 4x squared um, plus 3x squared will still give us minus 1x squared so the next thing i will do is to group into 2 and factorize so the first group will now be x to the power of 4 minus 4x squared i'm going to group this 2 and factorize then plus we have 3x squared minus 12. I will now factorize this and everything is equal to 0. x to the power of 4 is common to this 2. So, sorry, x to the power of 2 is common. x squared will come out as a common factor. Now, here we have x squared. Because if you multiply these two, you have x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 2 is out so 4 will be left over then plus what is common to this 2 is 3 now x squared will be left over here then minus 3 into 12 will give 4 we'll have 0 and to know whether you're right or wrong what you have to do is to check the terms you have in the bracket if they are not the same, then there is a mistake somewhere. Now that we have common factors, we will factorize x squared minus 4 as a common factor. Then we have this x squared remaining. Then we have plus 3. Then we equate everything to 0. And at this point, we apply our 0 product rule. Remember, we are solving this completely, as we earlier said. So, to continue, it's either x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. So, our x squared minus 4 will equate it to 0, or x squared plus 3 is equal to 0. From here, x squared will be equal to 0 plus 4 and this means that x squared is equal to 4 from here we are expected to have a real solution why don't we take the square root of both sides okay we are taking the square root of both sides because of the square here now the square here and the square root the square root and the square will cancel now x is alone and it is equal to positive or negative square root of 4 and that is 2 and this is to say that our x is equal to 2 or minus 2 now before i continue to the next um to the next um equation which is x squared plus 3 equals 0 i would like to explain something very quickly why do we have positive or negative here every time you're taking a square root we are saying that before you have um please permit me to use this number 
Now, if you have um, square root of 4, square root of 4 is equal to 2, right? Because 2 times 2 will give us 4, right? Then, if you're equally getting square root of 4, it can also be equal to 2, I mean negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 will give us this 4. So that's why every time you want to take um, square root of both sides, on the right hand side, you are to have positive or negative value. One has to be positive and the other has to be negative because both of them will still satisfy. Okay, so that is what um, that is about. Now, we have these two solutions already. X equals 2 or minus 2. Now, let us go back to this um, particular equation which is x squared plus 3 equals 0. Now this means that x squared is equal to 0 minus 3 and our x squared is equal to negative 3. Now ordinarily you should be able to know that this will not give us a real solution and this is because we have we are having <coughs> It is because we're having a negative solution. I mean a negative um, value on the right. Mind you, we are to take the square root of both sides too. So we take square root of negative 3. But it is plus or minus like I said before. Now this is going to go with this. As our x is equal to plus or minus, we have square root of negative 3. Mind you, to press um, calculator for square root of negative 3 is not possible. So let's pick out the negative. So we have x to be equal to plus or minus square root of 3 multiplied by square root of negative 1. This way we can now press calculator for root 3 if we want to. So our x will now be plus or minus square root of 3 multiplied by i. Because square root of negative 1 is imaginary and it is i. Now our x is, um, we can decide to write this before the root. So that it will not appear to be under the roof, under the root. So we have um, plus or minus, we have i square root of 3. And this is a 2 in 1 solution because of this plus or minus. So x is equal to... We have um, i root 3 or negative i root 3. Now, let us get the four solutions. The first solution is x1, which is equal to 2. The second solution, x2, and is equal to negative 2. The third solution, x3, is equal to, um, we have i root 3. And the fourth solution, x4 is equal to negative i root 3. So these are the four solutions.